All right, during our time reporting in South Korea this week, we had the opportunity to walk the streets of Seoul and speak with Americans living on the Korean Peninsula. And the trip was very personal for me. When I was 10 years old, I lived on one of the largest U.S. military bases in Asia, U.S. Army Garrison Yongsan, and it is right in the middle of Seoul. This week, I visited my childhood home. I cannot believe it's exactly the same. More than 21,000 people are stationed at the Yongsan U.S. Army base. About a third of them are residents, including American service members and their families. This base is right in the center of Seoul. Almost geographically. I, when you look at the map, we're kind of like right there on the edge of the river, right there in the center. More than 30 years ago, my family lived here for two years. My father, a U.S. Army commander, oversaw the 5th Preventative Medicine Unit. I can't believe we found it. Yes, ma'am, this is it. It has not changed at all. Mm. It's, it's virtually the same. Garrison Commander Colonel Scott Peterson helped us find so my this, old house. This whole, this whole area, I mean, this military housing, it, it hasn't changed in like 32 years. Not much, not much. The, uh, the residences are pretty much the same. Again, a lot of maintenance has gone on inside the homes, but in terms of layout, uh, location, yeah, not a lot changed. My best friend lived there. In this duplex, I lived here with my three siblings and my parents. Um, I can remember doing Easter egg hunts out sure, the back. Sure, It's different. There used to be, there used, actually used to be a helicopter landing pad mm. in the back. Yeah, that's no longer there. I can remember President Ronald Reagan landing on that helipad in our backyard. In this picture from 1985, I'm standing by the front door with my mom and brother. Here I am today in the same spot. That was my room right there. That one right there. Yeah, that was my room. Even though the base is about 25 miles away from the DMZ, safety was never a concern for us. It was a great place to grow up. It really was a great place because we could, you were safe. That's right. Even though you're in the middle of a foreign country, That's right. in Seoul, South Korea, I could ride my bike and my parents weren't worried about me at all at 10 years old. They said, go play. No, this is a great community here, very, very close community. All the families are very close. The kids all play together. As you said, uh, it couldn't be safer, so we're very proud of it. We also visited my school, Seoul American Elementary. So this would have been probably my classroom. Fourth grade classroom. Fourth grade classroom. This is where you went to school. 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take you inside. Oh, my Thank God. You. Yeah, so this would have been your classroom 30 years ago. This would have been my classroom. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's virtually the same. This is the same, right? The one thing that would be changed... Is there's a TV. There's a smart board. Yeah. So it's an interactive smart board that you would use. Can you believe I was 10 years old in this classroom? Today, the elementary school upholds its reputation for delivering a top-notch education. Our students are still performing at such a high level yeah. that they're able to go to school anywhere they want to in the right. country. See, you have, you have a graduate of this school who's now a journalist on go. CBS. It's a great thing. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a great country. It's yeah, a great it's installation. Right. Yeah. It's a great place to live and work, that's for sure. The students great. do well, though. They still are doing well. And who knows, we may have the next CBS yeah. anchor here. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Nora. Yongsan also just happens to be where I started my career in broadcasting. Yes, there are a lot of students. Find giving on-camera English lessons. Voice, voice. Nora dreamed that she met Christopher Columbus. For the Korean Educational Development Institute. See you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. That, I was that's promised. so great. Yeah. I, I was hoping those tapes would never make the light of day, but now they have. Why would you hope that? I think that's uh, yeah. adorable it that was, you have yeah. that. It what was, a treasure. It shows how much you look like your daughters. Don't you think, Charlie? Yes, they look, Or they yeah. look like you. Wow. Yeah. It was neat to go back, and I think it's important to remember, you know, so many, it's not just soldiers who are overseas. Their families are sometimes with them, and that's part of the reason they're moving, you know, out of Yongsan and moving it to Camp Humphreys, because they've got families they've got to keep safe. Be safer for them. Yeah. I like think it. it's interesting that at 10 years old, you knew you wanted to do this. I just wanted Barbie's dream house. <laughs> so here, you knew at 10 years old that you wanted to do the news. I think that is amazing. And here we are. Did you know what you wanted to do at 10? No. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I had no clue what I wanted to do at 10. You wanted to be a doctor, right? Early on, yes. Yeah. Yes. I didn't change until I got to college. No. And now we're all here together. Now we're here. Lucky us. Yeah. All right. Great trip. Welcome back, Nora O'Donnell. Thank you.